Daily Roman Life in the City, Part 1 With Carthage conquered and the Punic Wars finished, there was nothing to stop the spread of Roman power. Rome became the heart of the Mediterranean world. The Romans realized that they no longer needed to worry about growing and producing all their own food. Instead, they could import wheat, olives, and other basic foods from other countries. Then, Roman farmers could focus on raising only the crops they wanted. Ancient Rome became a major center of trade. Goods from all over the known world flowed through its Roman ports, and in the process, Rome became rich beyond compare. The city grew at a rapid rate. It must have been astonishing to be there, to witness all the workers who were involved in building the Colosseum, the Forum, the temples, and all the other buildings you see in these pictures. Someone built this model out of clay, and some of the buildings are probably about as big as a pencil eraser. This model is based on what we estimate Rome would have looked like 2,000 years ago, based on old Roman maps, drawings, and writings, as well as the hard work of archaeologists in discovering these items. To the right of the center of the image, you can see the Colosseum. The long, oval structure in the lower left of the image is called the Circus Maximus. This model gives you a good idea of some of the places a Roman child might have seen as he or she explored the city. Roman Family in Their Apartment Model of Rome So what would it have been like to be born and raised in the city of Rome? Let's imagine that you are a child born into a plebeian family. You live with your mother, father, sister, and brother in a small apartment near the center of the city, not far from the great Colosseum. Your apartment building is crowded and noisy. There is always someone yelling or crying or laughing. There is smoke from ovens and open fires in the courtyards where women bake and cook. They are not allowed to cook in their apartments for fear of burning down the whole building. On warm summer mornings, you and your friends like to go to the bridge across the Tiber River and wave to your father and the other merchants as they return from the docks on their way back into the city. Your father dreams of becoming a wealthy merchant one day, but right now he only owns one little boat. Each morning, he and his partners row out to the docks, where the big ships unload their exotic goods. Your father buys goods from the merchants on the ships, and then he resells the goods in other places in the city. He is a good businessman. He buys goods at the wharf at a low price, and then sells them for a higher price to the rich people in the city, who are too busy or lazy to come out to the wharves themselves. He doesn't care what kinds of merchandise he gets, pottery, fabric, dried fruits, or whatever else he can find, as long as he gets a good price. After the boats pass, you and your friends hurry home for your daily lessons. Like most other plebeian children, you are educated at home by your family instead of going to school. You are taught to read and write in Latin. You are taught good manners and proper behavior. You learn about Roman gods, Rome's history, and what it means to be a proud Roman citizen. You also learn about your culture, the traditional songs, dances, and recipes. Children watching their father captain his boat up the Tiber. Roman children at their lessons. Your sister often goes to music lessons. Your aunt sometimes takes her and other girls for a flute lesson near the Temple of Minerva, 
built to honor the goddess of wisdom and creator of music. The boys exercise and play rough games to become stronger. The parents are responsible for making sure their young boys are strong enough to serve in the Roman army when they are old enough. You like learning about Roman history and poetry, especially the work of a poet named Virgil. You heard a poem by Virgil one time, and this line stuck in your head. Fortune favors the brave. This line is very important for Romans. It means that you need to be brave, willing to take risks and try new things if you want to have good fortune or luck. You know from the stories your mother and father have told you that Rome became successful because of many brave Roman citizens who came before you. Mosaic of Virgil. Some days when you walk through the city, you can hear the cheers of the crowd in the Colosseum echoing through the city whenever fights are occurring. The Colosseum is a huge amphitheater that seats 50,000 people. Your parents will not let you go see the fights in the Colosseum, but you know what goes on there because you have heard many stories. Not too long ago, however, your father took you to see your first chariot race at the Circus Maximus. The Circus Maximus is a great big race track in the middle of the city. You sometimes see chariots in the city, but mostly they are used by soldiers in battle. When you see them sauntering down the city street, you don't think anything of it. They're just men standing on two wheeled wagons being pulled by horses at a slow and relaxing pace. But these chariots seem completely different when you see them racing around the track at the Circus Maximus. Charioteers racing in the Circus Maximus. Chariots pulled by horses can move incredibly fast. They can also be incredibly dangerous. The driver, called a charioteer, stands on a wheeled platform and clings to the reins, hoping that he can keep control. Most of the Roman charioteers are men, but there are a few women, too. As they quickly round the curves in the racetrack, the chariots often look as though they will crash at any moment, and sometimes that is exactly what they do. Children running through a Roman street. Rome is a huge, crowded city. You never know what you are going to see on any given day. Just the other day, you saw a man leading lions down the street. You have no idea where he got them or what he was planning to do with them. But seeing lions in the street is not that unusual in Rome. People from all over the world live here, and many of them follow this saying, When in Rome, do as the Romans do. Of course, many of the people living here are slaves who have been captured as the Roman legions conquered new lands. But many others are merchants, travelers, or just people who have moved here to try to make a better life. Children Admiring the Aqueduct The city is full of opportunities for acquiring wealth, new knowledge, and new experiences. Even though you were born and raised in the vibrant city of Rome, you are still amazed every day by all the things you see and do. Sometimes you need to relax and get away from the bustle of life in the city. Fortunately, there are quiet places in the city to relax. Your favorite place is on a little patch of grass near the Temple of Apollo on one of the seven hills where Rome got its start. There you sit and admire the aqueduct. This beautiful structure supported by arches carries fresh, clean water from the mountains into the city. 
Your father has explained to you that aqueducts depend on gravity and pressurized pipes to help the water flow through them. The water comes from nearby mountains, and because the water source is higher than the location of the city, the water flows downhill through the channels of the aqueducts with the help of gravity. Romans use a lot of water for fountains, public baths, water wheels, sewers, and faucets in the streets. This is one of the structures that your father has seen in his travels and has told you about: an impressive bridge and aqueduct called the Pont du Gard. The aqueduct is just one of many ingenious accomplishments, in addition to road networks. Sewer and heating systems, and beautiful structures such as the Colosseum and Pantheon, that surround Rome and make you proud to be a Roman citizen. Roman Aqueduct.